Hi, everyone. My name is Cecilia Crumbly, and I am the program administrator at the Psychotherapy and Spirituality Institute. Um, I'm here with Rebecca Brown Martinez to talk a little bit about her upcoming therapeutic breathwork and meditation course. Hi, Rebecca. How are you? Hi, Cecilia. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself um, and your, your work at PSI? Yes, sure. I'm a marriage and family therapist at PSI. I see individuals, I see couples, I see families, and I'm also outside of PSI and within it. I am a breathwork, yoga, and meditation teacher. Awesome. Uh, well, I would love to ask you a few questions um, about your upcoming course at PSI. So first question I have for you is, how can breathwork and meditation benefit people in their daily lives, especially during these stressful times? Oh, they're stressful times, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. We have the election coming up and then the holidays and, you know, how holidays bring some challenges to to most of us. I I, I see that we're experiencing a lot of stress, we're navigating times of sometimes intense grief or worry, and we need all the help that we can get to have some sense of agency as we go through these times. Um, practices like breathwork and meditation, they're scientifically proven actually to reduce stress to improve emotional regulation, to achieve greater peace of mind. And there's many other benefits which are scientifically proven, but for me personally, what I have encountered is that people get and they experience a great sense of relief after being able to breathe deeply or to sit still for even if it's just a few minutes. What these practices do is that they offer an opportunity to have the intention and to actualize more body connection. So to ground ourselves in our bodies. And when we do that, we feel more connected to ourselves and then we can cultivate from within whatever it is that we need to face these times and these challenges, uh, whether that be strength or confidence or relief, or simply to improve the quality of, of breath, of a rest, sorry. But what another thing that I have seen is that breathwork is a great tool to get, um, to release or let go of emotions that get stuck in the body. Um, it's also a great way to feel more energized, more focused, more awake. And Another one that I love is that it gives us a, an ability to develop and explore different types of cognition because most of us rely way too much on the mind and, and our intellectual abilities, but we actually have a vast, vast um, variety of, of cognitive abilities that are not of the intellect. We have perceptual cognition, we have emotional cognition, we have social cognition. And when we become more embodied through the breath, we can develop these different forms of, of cognitive abilities. Um, Earlier, you mentioned breath work as a tool. Uh, what makes your approach to breath work and meditation unique or different from the other techniques out there? You know what? Um, I'm constantly learning from my students. I have been teaching for over a decade and my approach continues to evolve. So the last couple of years, what I've been doing is I've been developing what we call hypno breath. And that includes hypnotic language. I'm a hypnotist as well. And so I incorporate hypnotic language and hypnotic states or states of trance into the practice of breath work. Basically, I guide people through repetitive and rhythmic breathing practices that enable them to alter their states of consciousness. That sounds a little bit wild, but it's really not it's really not that 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 crazy. Um, the thing is, we experience different states of trance every day. 
For example, daydreaming is very common. Um, another very common one is when we're mindlessly scrolling through the phone or when we're binge watching TV. Um, at the greater level of trance, I would say that we experience a trance of loneliness or hopelessness. And so my training as a hypnotist enabled me to recognize different states of trance that are caused by what is called alien messages. And they're alien because they're not ours. So it's not that they're extraterrestrial. Um, it's more that someone gave us a message, we internalized it, believe it to be true, and then we're under the spell of it. So what's something that I share with my students all the time is how I myself was in a state of trance of unworthiness for most of my life actually I believed things the messages the alien messages I was told that I believed was you're too crazy you're too emotional you're too much and what it what it cost me being under that in that in that state of trance what it cost me was that I became disconnected from some of what I consider to be my most interesting qualities as a woman, like my intuition, my sensitivity. Um, and it took me many years to wake up and realize, oh, these messages are not true. I don't have to believe them, <laughs> right? So you can see how there's different degrees of, of altered states of consciousness or consciousness or states of trance. So the way I teach breathwork over the last couple of years have been I've been developing this method where I teach people to go into a state of trance on purpose. They do it with consciousness. So they bring conscious awareness to the practice. And what I have heard students report is that, for example, um, when they develop that ability to bring consciousness into altered states, is that they have more lucid and vivid dreams. They develop deeper intuition. Um, one of my favorite ones is, and I get it a lot, is people feel more connected to their loved ones who have passed, which I think is really beautiful because it allows them to stay connected and to continue to receive love and wisdom from them. Um, you know, I like to say that breath work gives you what you need and what you're ready for um, it's not like a pill where you're going to take it and expect a specific outcome it's not designed in a lab like that breath work and meditation are more like natural medicines and they have their own intelligence but you know then again research <laughs> continues to prove that they're they are effective in in, in treating many different things I love how you said that you like to learn from your students. Um, what can your students or the participants um, in the upcoming six week course expect to learn and experience? Oh, thanks. Yeah, I I mean, I, I'm putting so much love into this course, Cecilia, I because I love the practice so much. And what I hope to do and, and my goal really is to give the participants the capacity to build their own practice. So to have like a personal method, so to speak. I want to teach people how to do that, how to develop their own practice instead of just handing them instructions and following steps, breathe in for, breathe out for, <laughs> which they can just Google at any time. So my goal is to show them how to access their own wisdom from their lived experience, right? And so that they can infuse and inform their own practice from that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of handing down prescriptive knowledge, just like people can just go get a book, you know, for that. I'm more interested in guiding them to access their own creativity. But of course, I'm going to give them a lot of really important and useful information like scientific knowledge on nervous system regulation and um, how to develop presence of mind what are the different levels of mind i'm also going to teach them all about hypnotic language and hypnotic states um, i'm gonna most importantly this course is trauma informed 
because we don't want to cause harm. So that's a that's an important detail. Um, I think that we're going to be practicing also um, different methods and then and then go through them through dialogue and discussion to see, you know, this one method, what did it do for you? What did it do for you? Because we will see in real time how the same exact breathing technique has different responses in different people. That's why that's why instead of giving them prescriptive, this is what you do for stress release. This is what you do. Instead of doing that, we go into the practice, we have an experience, and then we share with each other um, what that effect was. And then we can begin to develop really personal um, methods that come from, from that experiential knowledge. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, and thank you so much for sharing that, Rebecca. I am so excited for you. And I know that it's going to be a great course. Um, just to wrap up and, and end on things, is there anything else that you'd like to share about the course? No, just invite people to come and join us. It's it's going to be great. Um, I think that people are going to be really happy with it. And I'm, I'm going to be right there with them every step of the way following people's pace. So it's a, it's a private group, you know, it's not too large. And that makes it possible for me to customize the content also for for those who are in the room which is the one thing that I'm most interested in also sharing with them how to do that so so yeah um, go to the website on psinyc.org and look it up and join us Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Rebecca. Um, this has been fascinating to listen to. And I'm once again, so excited for you and everybody who is able to join the course. It's going to be great. Thank you so much. Thank you.